Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for holding this hearing. Um, you know, it comes to no surprise that I disagree with the President and what he's done with this executive action. It's not as much the issue of immigration and, and dealing with uh, the undocumented workers as it is to what he actually did. I think he crossed uh, a line with uh, the constitutional uh, separation of powers. But I hear a lot of doublespeak um, in his speech and in the, in the words that I've heard today. I'll give you an example. The President said in his November 20th speech about this unconstitutional executive action that undocumented workers broke our immigration laws, and I believe that they must be held accountable. That's directly from his speech. Felons, not families, criminals, not children, gang members, not a mom who's working hard to provide for her kids will prioritize just like law enforcement does every day. But in the Hill publication, May of 2014, it documented that uh, DHS released 68,000 illegal immigrants with criminal convictions. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officials last year released 68,000 illegal immigrants with criminal convictions. That comes from an end-of-year weekly departures and detentions report. How do you reconcile, Mr. Secretary, what the President said with the actions of the agency? Well, with regard to those who are released from immigration detention, uh, this is something I have worked on myself. First of all, <clears throat> there is a Supreme Court case, Zavadas v. Davis, which you may have heard of, which mandates that after six months, if the person is not going to be repatriated in the foreseeable future, we have to let them go. So why, unless, aren't, we, why aren't we repatriating these people? Well, that is something that requires a willing partner on the other end, which I have had conversations with the State Department about to further encourage countries to take these people back faster. And we had a but hearing in the Foreign the Affairs may, Committee about may. that last week, and <clears> these <throat> countries should take these. I mean, they are required to take these back. And I didn't mean to interrupt you. If I finish my sentence, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, so a number of releases are mandated by law and Supreme Court jurisprudence. A number of releases are ordered by an immigration judge. With regard to the instances where an immigration official who works for me releases somebody with a criminal record, what I have recently directed is that the approval for that be at a higher level uh, of the ICE field officer. Um, I want to know that we are applying a consistent standard to those circumstances because they may jeopardize public safety. And I have also directed that a person should not be released because of reasons for fiscal constraint, which is what we faced when we had sequestration in FY13. We will find the way to pay for it if we believe somebody should not be released for reasons I think of some reports safety. came out, Mr. Secretary, that sequestration really had nothing to do with the release of uh, folks last year. Um, I could go back and find the documents. Um, let me ask you this. At the end of the year of 2014, how many criminal aliens have been released? What will your year-end weekly departures and detention report show for 2014? I believe it is less than uh, FY13. FY13, I believe, was 36,000. I think the number for FY30 will be about 30, and I think it should be lower. So about 30,000 plus or minus criminal aliens have been released. Pursuant to okay. legal requirements, orders of a judge, I believe it should be lower, which is why I have enhanced the approval authority. I have raised the approval authority for that. I think the, one of the biggest problems with getting any kind of immigration issues passed through the United States Congress is a lack of trust of the American people in the administration to enforce the laws. They have told me, and I know my colleagues have heard it on both sides of the aisles, why would you pass another law when the administration fails to enforce the current laws that are on the books? Why pass another one that is not going to be enforced either? And then you, you hear about 68,000 illegal criminal illegal aliens that have been released. That further erodes the trust of the American people. The American people want to see border security. They want to see deportations. They want to see enforcement of the law. And when they see that 50 percent, 50 percent, 49 percent, I'll give you that, of the illegals in this country are visa overstays, these are people that we're not chasing a footprint in the desert. We know who they are. We have got their name. They have had an interview at a consulate or an embassy. They came here on a visa. We know who they are. That is low-hanging fruit for enforcement. So I ask you this. How many of the visa overstays are granted uh, immunity through the President's action? Any? Um, offhand, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, Congressman, I will say this, though. 
I'd like to see a I'd like to see this Congress pass a bill. I'd like to work with Congress on passing a bill. The President has said that would be his preference. The problem is we have no partner. I think Congress. Congress can pass a bill when the American people start regaining trust in the administration to actually do their job and enforce the laws that are already on the books, and I yield back.